Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. This is Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, Edge is all elite. Zack Sabre Jr. and Brian Danielson put on a clinic. We have a new NXT champion crowned at No Mercy. DIY reunites and the end of Dynamite. The end of Dynamite segment totally reeks of awesomeness. That and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. I wish they had never just cut that out. I know he what he said, but damn it, just, just leave that shit in. Fuck. Ditch that nine to five. It's time to feel alive. Hello, Mark. Welcome to the Band from Ringside podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bill Vagy, a.k.a. Maria Shara Pinfall. <laughs> And sitting directly across from me, we have Jason Cornelius Bell. What's going on, JCB? I hear beefers crying. I see beefers dying. I feel tensions rising. I taste blood that's drying. I hear beefers in my head. They counsel me. They understand. They talk to me. They wow. talked to me. Wow. And on that note, we know that I'll ask for congregation to bow their heads as I read from the latest edition of the Band from Ringside podcast, volume 328, Just chapter 3, verse 14. <laughs> and a good spark said, hashtag move the heels. It's all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat. Loaded roster of shit to talk about. And a small window to do it. Let's get it on, baby. Out there in Portland, Oregon, we have three beers. Zach. What's going on? Three beer. Beer for West is driving in the house. I gotta up my intro game here, but uh, <laughs> I'm in the car with my family. It is my baby boy's 14th birthday. Hey, hey. Happy birthday, Dexter Pullman. What's going on? Where are you guys going to eat? Uh, he wants uh, fried chicken. So now we're talking. Too- yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a really good fried chicken place up here. So. Nice. Well, happy birthday, Dexter. And sitting directly to my right, we have Vice. What up, turd? <laughs> What's going on, Vice? What up? Uh, so. I, was, I was excited to come here tonight, and my uh, my son, you know, he calls you Uncle Bill. Yeah. He loves you very yeah. much. Sure. He's like, hey, uh, Dad, can you, uh, can you give Bill a message? I haven't seen him in a while. I was like, What's that message? What? what up, turd? Yeah. <laughs> I was with your son when I was the highest I've ever been when we saw Dead Reckoning's Dead Reckoning <laughs> Mission Impossible. I've I've never been so high in my life. Dead Reckoning. And I was I was sitting right next to Owen, just just absolutely out of my mind stone. So yeah, tell him I said what's up. Dead uh, Rec so, Dead Rec Dead Rec Crew. Dead Rex Crew. <laughs> so uh we got like I said, we got tons of shit to talk about. Uh Zach is in the car uh on his way to his son's birthday dinner, so we have him for a limited amount of time, so no fucking is it a bad time to tell you that uh, you're on speaker? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. I was about to ask it. I was like, "Man, I'm driving a lot of f bombs. No more fucking around." <laughs> I had a. I had a great war story, but we'll say that for later. <laughs> hey, Zach, it's now a good time to uh, make sure I'm not a speaker because I'm here to tell you that I married the wrong cousin. Oh wait, don't. Cow, cow, cow! Yeah, we off to a high start, baby. <laughs> Let's get to that three count. The meme of Tony Stark. Right. Uh, <laughs> Bob's blowing up behind him. <laughs> Shoes throwing his shit. JCB, kick it off. What's the one count? Uh, since Zach is on limited time, we're going to talk about, obviously, the one thing that we're going to talk about the most, probably, and we're just going to skip a little protocol. We're going to go to Wrestle Dream up there in Seattle, Washington. Big time card, loaded card. Let's just start at the top, work our way down. Opening match, MJF versus the Righteous. Pretty straightforward. Um, righteous. Well, we'll just, uh, well, go ahead. Go be, ahead. Because of Zach's limited time, let's just start. Let's start with the main event. Yes. Fair enough. Let's jump to the main event. Um, I'm, excuse me. If you guys want to do this, please, by all means, knock yourselves out. Thank you. Main event time. Darby Allen versus Christian Cage, best two out of three falls. First match, first pinfall, I believe, was five minutes in. Darby wins the first fall, second fall. Christian wins it. 
Then, obviously, we have the third fall where all chaos begins to break loose. Uh, the stair spot was probably the one spot where I was thinking I was with uh, Tinder Mahal. He and I were watching it, and he dropped Darby the second time off of the apron uh the first time you could kind of tell that he wasn't, it didn't look like he felt comfortable just launching him off. So the second time he kind of like threw him on the side, which looked just as bad, but neither here nor there. Ring apron comes open. You see the four boards. So I'm just like, oh shit, where the fuck is this going? Obviously, Adam Copeland makes his triumphant debut, comes in and takes care of business post match. Um, I thought all in all, I thought this was a really good two out of three falls, especially when the third fall started to get a little more uh, physical, dare I say. Um, Darby Allen, I don't think, loses anything in this. I know, he, you know, he made a big deal about it. he's not losing in Seattle. He can This match could have been on the moon, and Darby Allen is basically Teflon at this point. Christian Cage, I think, needed this more. It just sets up anything that's going forward with Adam Copeland. We'll talk about Dynamite in a minute. But I thought this was a really good main event spot where both guys came out looking a little better than they came in walking in with. Zach, what you think? Go ahead, Tariq. Yeah, dude. Uh, the number one thing, uh, Darby Allen's crazy, which we already knew. But that bump on the stairs was one of the most brutal wrestling bumps I've ever, bumps I've ever seen in my life. It was insane. Um, also, just what a dream uh, for Nick Wayne. I mean, the kid's 18, uh, his first ever heel turn in wrestling, and he gets to belt shot uh, one of his mentors uh, in the ring with Christian Cage and then have Sting come out to save and then have Edge debut in the promotion to come out to make that save. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's a very, very memorable angle. And uh, I thought it was really well done. They were able to send the crowd home happy, even after a Nick Wayne heel turn in Nick Wayne's hometown. Um, just really, really memorable shit. Uh, and the match was a spectacle. And, uh, I mean, pulling the canvas up, you don't really see that too often uh, in any promotion. But, uh, yeah, this was uh, definitely uh, main event material. As soon as they said it was the main event, though, I was like, Edge is coming to AEW. I just knew it. Because otherwise I felt like Zach and Brian would have made him into this thing. But, uh, man, I really wish I could have gone. Um, mm. you know, just uh, my, my wife said I couldn't. No, actually, she really urged me to go. She said next to me, so. Uh, I don't said that, but she really urged me to go. But uh, I made the responsible decision to not do it. So. Yeah, I was. I wasn't watching this live. I was watching it like 15 minutes behind, like I did last time. Like you know, there's not much more I can say to add on to what you guys said. Darby Allen is crazy. Um, Christian Cage is at the top of his game. Once this went, once we found out that this was going on uh, last, it was pretty obvious that Edge was coming out. Not a bad thing. Um, it still popped me, and it still. Um, well, what was the? I wasn't at Joey's. What was the? What was? What was the reaction to Joey's when Edge came out? Um, it was. It was. You know. It was favorable. It was just. It was more like when is he coming out? You know what I'm saying? As the, you know, you started to get Sting and Darby in uh, the compromising positions. The concerto was set up, and you hear the music. And I, and I, my initial thought was, "Oh shit, it's Edge's old music." Nice. Didn't trip up because the the first part you think you know me is actually Beth Phoenix, and that, that kind of threw me for like thirty seconds. But then the music started. I was like, "Oh shit, here we go!" So I was like, "Okay, you know, me and Joey kind of looked at each other. You know, we had a little weed. I was like, let's do this shit." So yeah, for me, I was just I was more excited just to see what was going to happen next. Was he going to side with Christian or was he going to turn against Christian? That is Beth Phoenix saying that. Yes. Oh wow! I n- just found that out that. today. Really? Uh, this was um, – Zach, what was your reaction when Edge came out? Uh, do when? Uh, what was your reaction when Edge came out? I was surprised to hear the music because uh, I just 
assumed it was a WWE thing. I didn't know it was like a, just a band song. Um, but uh, that was cool. Uh, I do like that, you know, you get the baby face pop. I was talking about it last week, um, you know, him doing a feud with Christian. Um, and I know you guys are saying you want to see him team, and I agree, but I think doing a feud first and then teaming to end, he, he talked about the press conference wanting to end his career uh, with Christian. So uh, just starting with the feud, then they get together, because Christian does not need to be a baby face at all right now. He is Mm-mm. doing so good. So, you know, let him feud for a while and then team up later on towards the end of the run. Maybe give him a run with the tag belts. At least give him shots at him. So. You ain't shit. No, I agree. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't mad either way. I just wanted to see what it was going to happen. The Nick Wayne heel turn was still pretty fresh. I thought that might happen when uh, Darby forgave uh, Ar Fox, and you could see Nick Wayne was already kind of salty about that. But in the, and then you know little things you know in that uh world championship eliminate, elimination tournament Nick Wayne wasn't helping Darby but he was kind of in the way you know it's not intentionally but just in the wrong place at the wrong time at certain spots so it always in the back of my head I was thinking that it could happen I just didn't think it would happen so soon with Nick Wayne just coming to AEW uh, well we've already we've already talked about Nick Wayne Way too much for my taste. I mean, Edge just showed up in AEW. Uh, so listen, Ed. Listen, Edge coming to AEW. It's one of those things that I never really allowed myself to believe was going to happen because it seemed like such a Smarks dream. It just seemed like way too much fancy booking. Like, oh, they're really going to get him the day after his contract ends, and he's really going to show up at the pay per view. He's really going to go. Uh, face-to-face with Christian and save Sting. I just can't believe it happened. And there's a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking that I've heard and that I've seen about this. And it's just it's just amazing the way that, uh, you know, they always say let people enjoy things. I want people to let themselves enjoy things. You might nitpick about, well, is this the best way to bring him out or should they have played the video? Did you guys see Christian's face the entire time Edge was coming out? I mean, just fucking beautiful shit. Just the look on his face was it was almost it was he was almost like portraying an emotion that can't be said with words. It was so fucking perfect. Christian's so good. Um the, the the dynamite segment we'll get to later, but as as far as debuts goes, incredibly memorable, incredibly fun, and this is this is Tony, Tony Khan is a kid with a billion dollars who is using an actual wrestling promotion like a video game, and God bless him for it. <laughs> and, and, but, but he's doing a, a profitable one too. And a profitable one, yes, yeah, he's doing a great job at it. And I just want to say that the Edge, uh, this Edge debut, I, you know what, the Adam Cole Daniel Bryan debut was also off the charts fucking awesome. I know this isn't probably as big as CM Punk coming, because CM Punk had been retired for seven years or whatever it was, and everybody knew that he Moxley. was coming. Everybody knew he was coming out that night. Moxley was really good, too. This is just something that they've um, that they've excelled at, and this, the other night, was a good example of how they made you wait for it. They might have they might have known that they knew that them putting this on last meant that everybody else knew that Edge was coming out, and then they made you think for a second, wait a minute, was Nick Wayne, was the Nick Wayne turn the big st- thing here, or was this beatdown angle with them tearing up the ring and tearing up the floor, is that the big angle here? But no, and really, the thing, I think it says you think you know him. I think it says now. Um, but either way, the fact that they got to keep the music seems like a big oversight on WWE's part. Maybe they can't, maybe, I think the name of that band is Metalingus, which is just fucking off the charts terrible. But, um, (laughs) if, if they didn't, if that's one of the worst things I've ever heard, I know if they, if, if Metalingus was smart enough to not take the money and then Tony Khan back the, the Brinks truck to their, 
to the fry side at Chili's or wherever they're all working now, um, then wow. I think I, good good for them. Maybe Jesus they maybe Christ. they can, maybe they can take a week off or something. Apparently, <laughs> apparently fuck? Edge is friends with the fan. PTO. Uh, so they 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 allow like they give the rights out and they they've always given the rights to Edge uh, to use the music. So. Uh, uh, they're I'll also. What, I love my children. The two of the three are in the car with me right now. Uh, I love them. I'm proud of them, no matter what they do. But if they formed a, a band and called it that, yes. I would not tell people. No, <laughs> no. Like even if they were on TV, right? kind of like the way that you have a podcast about yeah. wrestling and they don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, also, they they so WWE doesn't have rated R superstar trademarked. No, that seems that in, one fell off. Yeah, that seems that seems that seems like the slam dunk. It That's seems ama- crazy it's amazing. to me amazing. that Edge can make his debut and everything is the same except they have to call him Adam, Adam Copeland. Copeland. That's crazy. I That's, did, I, 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 Good for them. Yeah, great for Edge. I mean, it just made it, well, for Adam Copeland, it made his life a little simpler. You know what I'm no, saying? We but call, I mean, we shit. Call him, we can call him Edge. No, I, mean, I got to get used to his shit. No, well, you don't. No, you no, call Twitter did. X? Oh, hell no. Right. Well, now he doesn't have to, like, explain himself at the airport. He's like, yeah, I'm Adam Copeland. <laughs> <laughs> call me Edge. I mean, Edge is real. I'm, I'm not even. Uh, no, no, here's my ID. We're good. Just Edge's not really the best name best either, but it's better, better than Metal Lingus. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on. Uh, unless there's anything else that you guys want to say about this, we're going to get to it with our dynamite talk later. Yes, I have one question. What? How long before? How long before they start talking about Edge never knowing his dad? I mean, that really is. Wait, did Edge really not know his dad? Is that true that Edge doesn't know his dad? Two weeks. Two weeks. You give it two weeks. I'd say that. Tuesday. Dude, that's gonna happen if immediately. That. That's a true thing. That I just know is that Christian. Yeah. Christian goes off on everybody. Oh yeah, you know Can this. You is imagine coming. you this know this motherfucker is gonna happen. Oh, he's got a, a an arsenal of shit that he's got on the edge. Are you kidding me right now? Uh, oh, it's it's just getting, it's gonna get ugly. That first real promo battle. You say two weeks? Two weeks tops. Uh, anything else that we want to say about this? All right, keep no, it. Let, let, let's keep it moving. What what else is next? What's next, Jason? Uh, let's just go ass backwards. Um, FTR versus Aussie Open. FTR uh, reigning AEW Tag Team Champions. They defeat Aussie Open. Um, I, I would be lying if I said I was not a little emotionally pissed at the end of this match. I don't understand what we're doing with the Aussie Open at this point. Um, maybe Mark Davis's wrist injury is a reason why they did not have the titles and you didn't give make the switch here, but it it felt like this was a good time to do it. FTR bucks you can make happen at any given point, but we can hold that discussion for a little bit. Uh, I thought this was a good match. It wasn't the match that I saw at Royal Quest, but it was good. You know, finished aside, I thought this was good. It just wasn't. I, my expectations were in the Royal Quest realm, and this was a really good pay per view match, if that makes sense. Zach, what you think? Yeah, it was an awesome match. Uh, that World Quest match is just kind of transcendently great. Um, but this was an excellent tag team, kind of semi main, and I would, uh, I was also really pushing for off the open and I guess with the injury, it works out that they didn't do it. But, uh, man, I was, I was kind of bummed because I was like, man, I was like, what are you doing? Not just with off the open, but like, what are you doing with FTR? Like FTR didn't really need the belt. They've had them for fucking ever. But then with the young bucks, FTR, they're going to do that, roll that back again, which is always money. And honestly, I think they probably will take the titles. Like bucks haven't had the titles in a while and let the bucks give another team the rub. Um, then the FDR doesn't have to lose to uh, any, just any team. They lose to the greatest tag team of all time. Oh, so. Jesus fucking Christ. Here you go. <laughs> God damn, man. I'll let uh, Bill cake, come back. Cake, and cake, 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 cake. <laughs> Say buck nasty. Your mama's be- tub water is outside. Just ready to drink it. Um, yeah, I, 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 don't get me wrong. I like the Bucks. Don't get, I just, the greatest uh, goats of tag team. That's mama wears underwear with dick holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you excuse me, I gotta go home and put some water in uh, your mama's dish. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Buck Nass. He just gets ran down in that whole segment. I'll let uh, Bill come back and talk about Aussie Open FTR in a second. Let's jump to that six man tag uh, to catch the Will Ospreay and Sammy Guevara versus Kota Ibushi, um, Kenny Omega, and Jericho. Uh, to me, the question mark was Kota Ibushi. W- what was he going to look like? I'll let you talk about Kota Ibushi in 30 seconds. Boss Man is back. I'm sure he's got some Aussie Open. Uh, FTR thoughts to go ahead. It's on you, my friend. Well, all three of us picked Aussie Open. Um, I think that that's very disappointing that Aussie Open didn't win. I am sick of the young. I am sick of FTR. How about that? Woof. Whoa. Wow. Damn. I mean, I'm not sick of watching them wrestle. I'm sick of. Uh, yeah, let's be specific. Cake, cake, cake. <laughs> I'm sick of them. I'm just sick. Of, I'm sick. I'm sick of their whole attitude. I just want them to lose. They got heat. I got heat with them. Well, okay. I kind of feel the same way. Well, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang I, mean, on. I don't think. It, come I don't think, find I don't BFR. Think, no, no, come find the two both. Say, come find them. <laughs> I, I'm gonna say that I don't think they need to be champions. I'm sick of them being champs. And which is what I said earlier, but I do think Cash Wheeler pulling a gun on a dude on the road is is not an inconsiderable part of this. Like, I can't oh, so you forget that up every time shit. I see him. <laughs> oh, shit, he's like, three weeks ago, he fucking pulled a gun on a guy. <laughs> he did pull and a gun on a guy. he's wrestling in front of the largest guy, the largest crowd in the world, and he's still the champion? Like, is there no consequences for your actions? I guess not in Florida or AEW, but, you know, innocent still proven nah, guilty, but nah. that dude... Now, now hold I on. Don't I don't remember this same attitude when Jimmy Uso got his third DUI. <laughs> well, I mean, you get mad at a dog for barking. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying. Jimmy over here catching strays. I'm just saying that I relate more to one of those crimes than the other. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe that's actually the truth. Yeah, I can't. I can't Eight. empathize with pulling a gun on somebody, but I can empathize with the other. Unfortunately, yeah, for sure. As yeah. a black, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can put a cat in the you can put a cat in the oven. Don't make it a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> As a black man, I should be like leaning towards one side or the other when it comes to the cash we were you know drunk pulling the gun out or Jimmy who's so drunk driving out. I should be leaning towards one side, but nah, neither here nor there. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, but, yeah, that's all I have to say. The, the, the match was what it was. It was a loaded night of wrestling, and I was thrown off by Zack Sabre Jr. and Daniel, and Brian Danielson going earlier. So um, this one kind of gets lost in the shuffle when I've been reflecting on the show. It's not one back that I. It's not one that I went back and rewatched. I'll see open FTR. Oh, okay, um, we're talking about the six man tag. What did you think about Kota Ibushi? I guess I could just put that out there to a- anyone who wants to answer, Bill or uh, Go ahead, Zach. I love this match. I thought it was a total party match, and there were elements of this that were off the chain. Uh, but Kota Ibushi himself, uh, I'd say you know he's almost there. He looked better than he has in all of the other. Uh, matches so far, but uh, you know he's still still a little slow. You know, kind of fell over backwards in the back flip, uh, and you know the the moon salt was a little slow. But uh, I mean, this match was awesome. You really can't ask for much more out of a six man tag. Yeah, this was nuts. Everybody was just firing on all cylinders to use uh, Bill's uh, words, and uh, it was great. <laughs> Well, thank you for that credit, because I was going to call this a Zach match. This is a party match. Like, really? Holy shit. Kind of sloppy. You, you guys need the room? <laughs> you, need to excuse, you need me to excuse myself? Kind of kind of sloppy, but tons of fun spots. Not a whole lot of selling. I mean, I, that's pretty much what Zach means when he says it's a party match. It's like nobody's selling shit. <laughs> it's just like cool move after cool move after cool move. Exactly. Remember whenever they did halftime heat and it was like NXT and it was just like a, a three on three like PWG match and like it was just nobody sold a thing for the eight minutes like yeah I don't know I love I love those matches they have a place yeah I'm sure you were a big fan of uh, Matt Jackson versus 
Ray Phoenix on Wednesday night also because there was not a whole lot of selling in that match either. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, no it's, it was Nick, actually. That That's why I saw it. I was just like, man. Oh, just... you know, no, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> yeah, man. I yeah, knew that. Yeah, you did. I did. I knew that. Mm-hmm. The, one with the, the one with the LeBron hairline. Mm-hmm. All right, what was next? <laughs> what did you, you think about this match, Jason? Uh, before, oh, yeah, I was say before, we, uh, before I got to go, I do want to talk to Zach and Brian, but, yeah, go ahead. No, uh, talk Zach and Brian. Yeah, let's talk Zach and Brian. <laughs> uh, I mean, this was my kind of match. I loved this match. I'm not saying it was the best match I've ever seen, but it was one of the most impressive matches I've ever seen, and I could not take my eyes off of it. Um as in, like, intellectual exercise, I was trying to figure out, like, how much of this they had planned and how much they were just winging because it seemed like they were just out there having fun. And I, you know, like, they had no idea what the other one was going to pull off, like, especially at the beginning. And they were just out there wrestling. And you could just see how much they were enjoying themselves. Like, the crowd was enjoying it. And I, I don't know that this is a match that I would want to show somebody – as like, hey, this is why I like pro wrestling, but like that is why I like pro wrestling. Uh, Jason, what do you think? Um, I know we talked about Okada, Danielson, and high expectations, and how you said it didn't meet those expectations for me. Even with the injury, I thought it was still, you know, living up to the hype. This this was all that, and then some. As someone that watches a a shit ton of wrestling this is something i would show somebody that is watching wrestling for the first time because it's not just all sports entertainment it's not a party match like we were talking about with the six-man tag there are guys that have technical ability and these are the two best guys that that i can think of at it and for two-thirds of this match it was a basically a technical master class the last third obviously you know that's when the tempers flare and you know you're going to get punches thrown you're going to get the knees to the face to end the match so for me this ex- it, this exceeded my expectations and this it, the expectations for me were coming in were pretty fucking high i'm sorry it just you can't tell me you're going to have danielson and zach saber jr in the same match and not have my mind just you know wander on to how this is going to unfold for me like i said it, it, this was the match of the night no question about it don't get me wrong two out of three falls was really good with adam copeland coming back but this was the match i was looking forward to the most and it just it, it did what it's supposed to do it ruled ass so there it is. Uh, we are who we are. Uh, that's three for three. This match exceeded expectations. Um, I kind of get what you're saying, Zach, by saying it's not the thing that you'd show somebody. It's just it's probably not what people think of when they think of like non wrestling watchers. This is not what they think of. This is this would this would blow some people's minds like a match like this. Uh, but yeah, I think it's like it's like a wrestling it's like a wrestling match for wrestlers and wrestling fans like really hardcore fans and it's not just because the the people are niche it's just like the style and like I said, it's like an intellectual exercise like watching it it's like it's like watching jujitsu which is like kind of you know like a chess physical chess puzzle um it was it was bonkers it i'll agree it exceeded expectations which is the best case scenario because expectations were very high very high and i've watched it twice and I would watch it again. Like uh, I don't. This was the best match of the weekend. Uh, I'll go that far as well. I think the second best match of the weekend was on NXT, but we'll talk about. I that. agree with that as but well. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, it it looks like they might not be done, right? It looks like there might be a yeah, part two. Yeah, oh, Zach was talking that shit. It was like you know, the, the need of the face wasn't the, so the technical get, part of that. Let's, let's get a let's get a best of three. Let's let's do that shit, man. We got to uh, sneak Okada in this motherfucker too. Because if because if they were talking G one, so because I mean, if they were holding stuff back, you know I, don't that, know, I don't know if they were holding stuff back, but there's there's room for a sequel. Not at all. At least what, in my mind. Right. Uh. All right. What else we got? All right, I gotta head out, but uh, oh, thank you guys for sorry, having Zach. me on. Okay. All right. Yep. We'll talk later. See you, man. Happy birthday, Dexter. See you guys. All right. I was going to mention, did you see the rumors today that uh, Edge um, punched Daddy Magic backstage last night? (laughs) 
Stop, dude. No, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not falling for the man and tailpipe. I'm just not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just not. Un- Unprofessional bullshit. bullshit. Edge is a problem. <laughs> that motherfucker ain't took five goddamn minutes. Look at him, just yakking daddy magic in the mouth. Who the fuck are you? He owns the place. <laughs> Fuck is this motherfucker here? When I was thinking of telling that joke today, I was like, who's the best guy that he could punch backstage? Like somebody we know, <laughs> but somebody who's not on TV all the time? Like somebody who's there, but somebody who's not on TV. Get all out of my face, you fucking Mark. <laughs> Did he punch Commander? <laughs> what a turd. Edge, and, Edge, and Command, Edge and Commander got, in the, got into the backstage. <laughs> no, we couldn't have sold that for shit because I just started laughing. Daddy Magic, I could at least try to play along and be like, yeah, you didn't hear that shit? What else we got, Jason? Um, going backwards still, uh, Ricky Starks versus Will Yuta. Little brother of BCC comes out, gets his ass handed to him in eight minutes. Not much here. Nope. Um, still going backwards, probably one of the more anticipated matches of the night, and probably my second favorite match on this uh, whole card was Hangman Page versus Swerve Strickland. Um, Seattle was the 12th man, like or said it was going to be, and it played a huge component in this match. It didn't feel like they were going to turn on Hangman, and then they turned on Hangman Page. I was like, oh, shit. This is some great shit. I thought the match was really good. The the crowd made it hotter than it was going to be. It was, once again, another match that I had high expectations for, exceeded those expectations. Swerve gets the win via fuckery, hitting uh, Hangman with the uh, the head crown of Prince Nana, who came out and got his boogie on, which is always a good way to, to get me excited. I would be lying if I said I was not swerving as Prince Nana was coming down as well. But, yeah, like I said, all in all, I thought Swerve needed this win, and I said it on Twitter before the match even started. He got the win. I don't even care if it was fuckery or not. He needed this win to keep that momentum he has going. Well, let me start with Paige first. Page, I, I give him some I give him some trouble for his uh for his promo style, but in ring <laughs> in ring has never been a question. Uh he played his part really well in this match and th- I, I I'm in agreement with Jason once again. This is my second favorite match of the night. So that's the hangman page part. Next part is I know that was a Seattle crowd. I don't think that they're going to be able to keep Swerve heel for very long. I think that Crowds are ready to get behind a big swerve run. And when I say a big swerve run, I'm talking wearing the big boy. He's going to be heavyweight champion. What do you think about that? Um, Not really a hot take, per se, because I see a lot of people saying the same thing. This Danielson match will be a nice litmus test next week to see how serious TK is, uh, is about swerve once again. Even if he wins with fuckery, it doesn't matter. Beating Brian Danielson means something. It means a lot of things. And that, to me, would be a signal. Go ahead. So, it's going to be Danielson versus Swerve for the number for a number one contender shot at the TNT title, currently held by Christian Cage. Is this the way? Do they do... Is this the way they have Swerve turn baby face and maybe have swerve no nah, because they're not gonna flip edge this early so edge keep i've seen two interviews with edge and he keep well one interview and then this promo on wednesday night where he mentioned swerve both times he is a huge swerve strickland fan edge is it, edge has said his name twice he's a huge swerve strickland fan he wants to do a program with him we should get a swerve edge program that would be badass. I'm, I'm not saying that I di- disagree with that. Um, Edge being full time doesn't mean the same thing that, that it would in WWE. Obviously, less dates, um, not as many um, house but, shows or whatever the case may be. So, but Edge has said that he was contracted to WWE for 10 matches a year and said, I want to do more. And they said, no thanks. They said, we want to keep you as a special attraction, which isn't that many matches. He came to AEW to wrestle. Right. So, um, you know, he's he. 
he said in the interview, he's like, I get it. That I, he's like, I get that way of thinking, and I have no problem with WWE wanting that for me. Uh, and I get it that if I'm there every week, after a while, it wears off, you know, and then I'm, um, you know, full time. So I guess they're going to have to thread a fine line. I think he's going to be a pretty fucking big deal for a pretty fucking long time. No, I agree totally. I mean, people that like Edge in WWE are going to at least peek their eyes in to see what they're doing with him in AEW. I don't see him coming out and stumbling by any stretch of the imagination. This Luchasaurus match feels like, you know, a good way to get, to get that ball rolling with a nice little dub to get things started. So, oh, I mean, you think he's going to beat Luchasaurus? I, I would be I would be a little shocked if he came out the, <laughs> the box the, with a, a, uh, an L, you know that, what I'm saying? That's a joke. That would Just, be the best if he came out and beat a dinosaur. Dude. <laughs> dude, saying, he's a fucking dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> 800 million years, my ass. <laughs> Go down here and take this three count. Um, from there, I'm not sure if they go to Christian right away. Obviously, Christian would have to beat whoever the winner of um, Swerve and Brian Danielson is, from, and then would, you just have to go from there. Um, just back to being Swerve, being the champion, I just I got to see, I have to see this shit first. You have got to show me more. We see Willow Nightingale. You know, she's been nothing. You mean, you mean for them to book it that way? Yeah. Not for Swerve to be championship material. No. You're he's talking clearly about, there. Okay, all right. You're he, talking about you'll believe it when you see it that TK actually, actually books, books, it. books it that way. Okay, all right. Yep. Yeah. okay, I'm with you. I love this match. Yeah. Match but, fucking yeah. ruled. Yeah. It was It was even before the Danielson match, obviously, and I was like, oh, shit. You know, y'all motherfuckers set this ball nice and high. They really did, man. Um, And the night just... Built to a perfect crescendo. It was those, really, those it was men. Really, it was really quite a pay per view. You man. take that Yuta, uh, we were Yuta, Ricky Starts. Up. Yeah, right. You take that we were Yuta, Ricky Starts match out in order. You'd had uh, Hangman Swerve, Danielson, ZSJ, that six man tag, Aussie Open FD, FTR, and Darby and uh, Christian Cage to close that show. Man, that's a nice little run of matches. You know, that uh, where were you, the Ricky Starks match? That was your time to go get your merch, get your, get your pee on, come right back, because this, this ain't going to take long. Outside of that, I thought the back half of this mat, the back half of this car was really, really good. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Um, Fatal 4-Way, Bucks versus the Guns versus Lucha Brothers versus Orange Cassidy and Hook. Obviously, we kind of talked about it this earlier. Bucks win this six or this fatal four way, so they get a shot at FTR at any given point. My guess would probably be full gear coming up on the 18th of Damn. November. Why um, are they doing this again? <sighs> did they feel like they didn't set the world on fire like they thought they were going to at the last pay per view? Why are they doing this again? Give us something. I mean, uh, listen, I'll re- I'll watch those guys wrestle all the time. But yeah, it's not that I. I, the Young Bucks don't need it, so thank you. I, I would have much rather than put over the guns, and you guys know how I feel about the guns. <laughs> I just thought they would use it as like a money in the bank what tool, and <laughs> goddamn, that never gets old. Um, and kind of sneak attack whoever the champions were in this case FTR, who they owe a receipt to anyway. So it kind of made sense. Lucha Brothers. They're former champs. They can march in at any given point and uh, demand a title shot, and, it w- and nobody would blink. Same as the Bucks, Orange Cassidy and Hook were the wild cards. Th- this was another party match. It yep. is. It, it was what it was. Yep. Bucks win. I just the booking has always been an, an issue with TK when it comes to me. Like I said, tag- great Matt Traker, Booker, eh. tag team matches for in AEW. At pay per views, are they they usually really rip? Um, so expectations are always high. I mean, I can't remember the last time there was a there was a uh, that's a fucking mouse right there. There was a fucking mouse on my deck. God damn, I got thrown off. I saw a mouse down there. Thought, he, thought it was Nick Wayne, dude. He's got an dude. Opinion. He's, got a, he's got an opinion. Uh, <laughs> he came in. Anyways, he was like, "Oh, don't say fuck, y'all started without me." Talk. What the fuck? Keep it moving. Squeak this. 
<laughs> Never seen a mouse even around this house. <laughs> Fucking mouse, man. Dude, seriously, quit rapping. Move on with the show. We should tell everybody right now, because I didn't say at the beginning, but we are actually podcasting from my daughter's room. So <laughs> to see a mouse in here is pretty strange. Stop. Stop. Probably change your diaper. Man, somebody might actually believe that shit. Well, it came out of her pocket. And it, was, it, was, it was in there making spaghetti, so ratatouille is fine. <laughs> don't anybody, don't swat me by calling DCFS to my house. Please and thank you. God damn. Again. Uh, what's next, Jason? You aged it. Um, God damn, that was great. Uh, Julia Hart versus uh, Chris Statler. <laughs> That never gets old. I will laugh at that to the day I die. I swear to God. That's, I could be in the worst mood. That's me talking to that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I could be in the worst mood, and that will always make me giggle. Julie Hart versus Chris that's Statler. That's talking to you. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was say, why you start without me, motherfucker? TBS title match. Uh, Chris Statlander wins. Julia Hart looked as strong as possible in a, a predictable finish. Um, Chris Statlander is, is now talking about she's beating the unbeatable, throws Jade out there, throws Julia Hart out there. I agree with her. At this point, It's she's getting the Gunther treatment, the Charlotte Flair treatment. We, you got to pick her until somebody fucking beats her. Now, I'm not seeing that happening for a while. Do not get me wrong. I will... I like Chris Statlander, but Tinder Mahal nailed it on the head that Sunday night. Why I don't connect with her. She doesn't have charisma, and that's what it is. She is vanilla as fuck on the mic, and then great in the ring. But just nothing about her on the stick makes me excited or dislike her. She's She's, just bland. She's the... Hangwoman Adam Page. <laughs> Damn. Come on, man. <laughs> I say she, uh, I'm not even going to say she's that bad. She's I, just, say, uh, I mean, my big takeaway from this is Julia Hart performed really well, and good on Julia Hart. She has made herself uh, into something, and th- the booking has also. They have made her <laughs> into yeah. something, <laughs> yeah. and now she is – you know, it was nice to have a pay per view off from Tony Storm, Soraya, and Ruby Soho and Britt Baker. If they're only going to have one women's match, we got to take a break from them because they haven't done anything new with that story in a long time. I don't know who's on whose team. Um, don't explain it. Just go on. It just not I, 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 I can fig- I can, anymore, I can figure it out if I thought about it. Just, just I know there's no team anymore. Well, yeah, I know. Okay, okay. Just, thanks. Just, all right. just, just move on. Okay. Just move on. I was just saying, there's no team anymore. Eddie Kingston versus Shimada for the uh, ROH and New Japan Strong title uh, titles. Um, Eddie Kingston coming in, like I said, on the short list of wrestler of the year for me, just on a complete role versus Shibata. Guy that's probably shouldn't even be wrestling. He, you know, if you haven't heard the story. He took a nasty headbutt versus uh, Okada that basically could have killed him, should have killed him, and now he's back as the pure champion. So in this scenario, Shibata could have walked out with all three titles. Did not do it. Eddie Kingston retains both titles. I thought this was a really solid match. Um, it was. A, it felt like a New Japan style match to me. Just both guys just trading slaps, kicks, punches, whatever you wanted to do. It wasn't two meaty men slapping meat, but it was two men, men slapping meat. And in this case, this worked out for me. It was a nice uh, palate cleanser from the curtain jerker nonsense that uh, that started the show. Since. WrestleMania weekend when Eddie Kingston had that match with Claudio, uh, Kingston has been on a tear. Mm. Good matches. Mm. Had an above, I, I, I've said it before, but he had an above average G1. Kind of exceeded my expectations at least there. And this was no different. Uh, he can wrestle that New Japan style of uh, heavy hitting kind of brawl, kind of, I guess, Ishii type match, even though Ishii's on a, on a different planet. But um, preach. Yeah, this was awesome. That was good shit. Um, Curtain Jerker, Righteous, lose to MJF solo dolo. Um, MJF uses the ropes um, to get the pinfall. Um, This this was what it was. If you thought that the Righteous had a chance, God bless you. I would like to smoke some of the shit you're smoking. Um, I just... 
I just don't understand why MJF and Cole even need the titles to keep their storyline. But another story for another if time. If they're not going to strip them, MJF should have lost here. Did nothing for the now, righteous. Now, I don't want to be this huge purist. I don't want to be fucking Jim Cornette about this or anything. But come on. I mean, MJF goes over both of them. Who cares if he used the ropes? That's fucking... You, you, that's... that's the, the, it, it's are, the it's the lame way to kind of protect the righteous, but it's but still it also de- defines down the belts quite a bit. When your boy didn't come out with both titles on Wednesday night, that's all I kind of needed to know right there. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? That, that's it. I was getting ready to say that you had the uh, the dark uh, uh, right. zero hour matches. <laughs> we don't need to talk about Josh. Actually, take that back. Josh Barnett versus Claudio. If you didn't get to watch that match, that was a sneaky good. That should have took the the place of Ricky Starks versus Will Uta. That should have been on the main show. Ricky Starks, God bless you. Will Uta, God bless you. That yeah. could have been zero hour or better yet, you could have put that on Rampage. That match yeah, was undercover hot. Woo! Ricky's- undercover hot. <laughs> Ricky Starks. Uh, deserves a match on the main card with the work he's been doing. I'm not disagreeing with collision. that. I'm not uh, disagreeing with I, that. I'm sure that's the reason behind it is all I'm saying. Uh, look, I, I want Ricky Starks to to get there before Swerve Strickland. Yeah, I said it. Oh, oh no. I that, said it. No, yep, that, I said it. No. That, that, I had a physical. Oh <laughs> I said it, God damn it. I had a physical reaction to that take. <laughs> I don't care. Um, okay, so we'll get to some more AEW later. Do you want to give this a letter grade? Joey asked me the exact same question like five minutes after this Joker ended, and I said, A minus. I'll stick to that. A minus. I don't know what else you can. I mean, Edge showed up. Ed showed At the up. very yeah. end. And, yeah. it, and it had Dan. Uh, that's an A. That's an A, man. I don't look. I don't begrudge you for that. What do you give it, Bo? My only question is: Do you think they uh, paid him extra for helping um, destruct the the ring at the end of the night? Who <laughs> Edge? Yeah. <laughs> like were they like, hey, yeah. hey, we'll get on an extra hundred bucks. You guys just keep ripping all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, doing that, right? Hey, new guy, you gotta break down the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to that two count. Welcome to the family, fuck. One. All right, so the night before, <laughs> the night before Wrestle Dream, we had NXT No Mercy, uh, and I'm going to start with the the biggest news from this one too, which was Carmelo Hayes versus Ilya Dragunov in the main event. Ilya Dragunov goes over Carmelo Hayes in what I was mentioning to Jason earlier was my second favorite match of the weekend. This match was fucking. Really, really, really good. Carmelo Hayes kept up. Dragunov is a fucking stud, man. Just an absolute stud. And Carmelo Hayes kept up with him. I mean, I think Ilya Dragunov is one of the best in the world. I think he's one of the best. Is he the best worker in WWE proper? Mm, yeah, that's you know you say. I, I'm not. Going I mean, going I know that, that I know I might be a prisoner of the moment. Of course, everybody will say Seth Rollins, and there's a lot of AJ Styles fans out there. Um, I don't know. Dragon is as good as anybody. No, uh, I mean Gunther, Gunther too, obviously, and and <laughs> and um, I was going to bring up Gunther slash Walter with Dragon Off. That's always been. Uh, one of the matches that we've pointed at it's long and in BFR history of matches that we've seen that we've always kind of harkened back to. I guess the the time that I d- took away from NXT, I forgot how the, this motherfucker how good he was. So he just reintroduced himself in a big time match. Um, came out the box high. It, it almost felt like Carmelo Hayes was going to get you know ran out the gym for a little bit. But fought back, and that's where you got the back and forth co- going to it. Those two H bombs, the second one from the rope. I was just like, oh, if he gets up, if he kicks out from this, Carmelo Hayes is going to retain. I'm like, there is no way on God's green 
earth he needs to kick out of this one. All the other stuff was a build up to that big moment. I would give Carmel Hayes all the credit in the world. I, I'm glad I got to watch the NXT title run. Didn't see the North American title run to make Carmelo Hayes who he is right now. But this was a good run. Um, it does leave some question marks out there that we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But yeah, this was this was the best match on this card, second best match of the weekend, and I agree with uh, Three Beer on this when he said it last week. Ilya Dragunov has earned. I won't. I hate to say deserved when it comes to wrestling. He's earned the way, the right to be the NXT champion. He looks the part. He wrestles the part. He's as physical as anybody is in the the main roster or in NXT. Uh, him and Baron Corbin is going to be very intriguing. If that's going to be the the first title defense for Dragunov because Baron Corbin is one of the few that has a dub over Dragunov. So, yeah, I uh, can't say anything more about this match. Both guys ripped it, and it was, it was like I said, it was the best match on this particular NXT card. Yeah, it looks like Baron Corbin's going to be next because he did get the win over Braun Breaker, which none of us predicted, and um, they did have that moment on Tuesday night. So is that a one to like- take Corbin? Baron Corbin's uh, next up, and I, for one, am looking forward to that match. Uh, the other title match, Becky Lynch versus Tiffany Stratton. Becky Lynch retains. What do you think about this? Um, Meltzer said that this was the best NXT women's match of all time, and I don't get me wrong. It was good, but... Holy shit, really? Yeah, that, that's, I'm just like, sometimes people in wrestling, including myself, are prone to hyperbole, and this is one of those cases. This was really good. But I don't think it was the best match in NXT history. There's you Sasha know, Bailey. Yeah. Um, a bunch of Oscar matches. Yeah. You can, you know, Oscar and everybody in it for certain scenarios. Um, for me, it's, it's once again more about Tiffany Stratton just making her look like a future women's champion on the main roster. Where she goes from this point, I'm not sure. It, it really doesn't matter. I mean, she's going to be okay. Becky taking the title or retaining the title, not a huge surprise. Like I said, the match was, you know, really good. It, it, I don't know if it deserved the main event spot, but that's, you know, another story for another time. I kind of get it. You know, it's Becky Lynch, so I kind of understand that. But I'd rather, comparing the two matches, the men's probably should have been the main event. That's just me. But I get it. It's Becky Lynch. She's from the main roster, so she's probably going to main event. I the just NXT. Forgot, I forgot that I watched these out of order. And I forgot that this was the main event. Yeah, that does make sense because it's Becky Lynch. But still, um, it was it was fucking awesome. Yeah, for a for a step match, but they basically let him go. I, I mean, I, Becky banged up her arm, obviously coming out of that. So their first match was awesome too. So yeah, I like the first match better, honestly. Um, okay, uh, we had Noam Dar retaining against Butch in a Heritage Cup NXT Heritage <laughs> Cup match. What you think about this match, Jason? You're already laughing. No, nah, Noam Dar is a damn clown. Is what I'm laughing. He, he's I mean, really good. He, he, what did he, uh, what did Vic Joseph said? It take took seven guys to uh to put for Butch to lose. Uh, right. and that's I, the guy's honest truth. It was basically, you know, Noam Dar, the rest of metaphor, and then obviously Gallus at the end jumping uh Tyler Bate, and then Joe Coffey laying out uh Butch to uh to help Noam Dar win the match. It, it's very Dom Mysterio-esque in a way. I won't even say Dom Mysterio-esque. That, that you know, angle has been going on for many, many decades. It's just now you have kind of two guys doing it at the same time, Dom and uh, Noam Dar in this case. But, no, I, I like the Heritage Cup. I like the rules. Um, this was a solid match. The fuckery was I, – I was, for me, it was obvious. It was just, you know – are they going to capitalize on Seth Fackery? You got seven guys. You better win that match. So, yeah, I thought this was a, a really fun match. They, Yeah, it's a fun match, and they the metaphor are fun. Noam Dar is fun. And, you know, the Heritage Cup takes a little bit of getting used to because of the different rules. It's, good. it's like the pure championship in ROH. Agreed. It's like just this long set of rules, and you're like, wait a minute, what? Uh, but uh, watching it for – the watching it for those two wrestlers was certainly worth it. Uh, big fan of this match. Down, uh, down. So Dom drops 
the North American title to Trick Williams and then gains it back on Tuesday night. Spoiler alert for Tuesday night on our <laughs> NXT on Tuesday night. And Trick Williams tells Carmelo Anthony that he doesn't need him. To, uh, Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Hayes, that he doesn't need him to come back outside. You're going to pass the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Trick Williams tells Carmelo Hayes that uh, not to come out and help him, and Trick Williams promptly drops the belt to Dominic Mysterio three nights later. What do you think about this, Jason? I was thinking about that on the way over here because I was – obviously, everybody knows I'm a Dom guy. Love this heel run. But I was mad for like 30 seconds. I was like, damn, then why do you have him lose? But then I was like, okay, let's think bigger picture. The bigger picture is the divide between best friends. And best friends being divided is, and once again, an old wrestling trope that always seems to work no matter what happens. In this case, it's Trick versus Mello. Mello didn't want to have anything to do with Trick. You know, stay in the back this time. Let me do my thing. Trick just did the same thing. And now both guys are going learning a hard lesson that they can do well, but having each other next to each other makes them both better. And now they're, you know, the male ego is going to start getting in the way. And ultimately, I think you're going to get a trick versus mellow match at some point down the line. Neither here nor there. Not, a, I wasn't for like 30 seconds, I was mad, but Trick Williams in this match showed a lot of potential. You see, I shouldn't say you see. I see now why Trick Williams is on the roster. He was basically, like Ilya Dragunov said, you know, he's so big, but he's still in Carmelo's shadow. He ain't in Carmelo's shadow anymore. This motherfucker is a legit mid-card, legitimate wrestler. He'll get the NXT North American title back, I'm sure, at some point. Just right now, it's all of the bigger part of the Trick Mello angle so people are getting people are really high on trick williams at the last few weeks it seems like let's not get crazy he's not as good as carmelo hayes i mean there's a lot of people saying that he has more potential wade barrett had an interview this week where wade barrett was like trick williams has the most upside of anybody in nxt which seems insane to me he because, has the size that carmelo doesn't yeah but he's still pretty green in the ring and carmelo hayes has shown that he is anything but uh, i'm not disagreeing trick with williams that. could not have had that match with dragon off that carmelo hayes had the other night uh he had a pretty good match against dragon off not as good as the one the other night i'm not it, saying that uh, uh the uh tag team match <laughs> i'm saying that he had a pretty good match if if that dragon off carmelo match was an a Let's say that uh, Dragon Off Trick match was B minus. Okay. Like I said, do you disagree? Like I said, he not as good as Carmelo Hayes. Um, so, moving on to the tag belts, uh, which was a four way <laughs> between the family, Los Lotharios, the Creeds, and Out the Mud. Uh, Jason, uh, the family goes over. Jason, what you think? Um, if we didn't see uh, Dax Harwood pull this uh, at Forbidden Door, then I wouldn't have even – maybe I would have fallen for the banana in the tailpipe on this one when Tony D gets, you know, hurt, quote-unquote, and then comes back and um, miraculously helps – him and Stacks retain the titles. This was okay. I mean, it was it was a fatal four way. Guys who got on the card. It wasn't anything that you know was like you know mind blowing or anything along those lines. The, the, the team that probably should have won won, but ultimately this just felt like a, a filler kind of match for guys to get on the card. Unfortunately, it was probably my least favorite match of the night. Oh, dang! Uh, I liked it. I liked it more than you did. I thought it was really well put together um i really like the family i think that they i'm not disagreeing that they've, they've grown on me uh, me personally i just rather just been like a singles match and just have pick one of these three teams for them to beat out the mud would have been perfect that that's who they end up beating anyway yeah i'd love to see butch and tyler Bate. okay win these belts that's what i'm saying i mean with rich coming back 
for a little bit. I mean, Butch and Tyler Bate versus the Creeds. That sounds like a fun match. Okay. Ultimately, I think we're getting there, but for this particular purpose, just looking at this card, there's not a match that I didn't like less than this. And I'm not saying this was a bad match. It was just okay. It was fine. Uh, Baron Corbin goes over Braun Breaker. This was the curtain jerker. This match fucking ruled. Uh, Braun Breaker comes out wearing uh, the, uh, the 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 head of the bear. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Did this Conan up in this motherfucker? I'll be damned. Did you enjoy yourself in this match, Jason? Corbin came out like the like Taker. You got Braun Breaker, you know, wearing the you know fucking bear headgear or something. Yeah. The entrances were definitely interesting, to say the least. And the match, I thought, once again, I could sound like a broken record, but it, it, it superseded my expectations. Um, Baron Corbin coming out, coming back looking strong is a good thing for the NXT roster. He could be a big-time heel at any given point. Obviously, like we said, feels like he and Dragunov are going to get it on again. So I'm looking forward to that. Um Obviously, you had uh, Michael Stone coming in. Where and does Breaker go from here? Von Wagner, he probably puts him over. That gets us to the, whatever they're – I'm assuming they'll have a pay-per-view in November. Yeah, they will because Lyra Valkyria and Vecchi Lynch, that pay-per-view should be Braun Breaker and Von Wagner. He should put Von Wagner over. And at that point, he needs to be in the Rumble – January 2024, pick yes. him a number, and he's on the main roster. That's yeah. it. Here we go. I like that a lot. Him and Carmelo Hayes, for that matter. It feels like that's kind of – they're the Austin Rock for – and I'm not saying that they're going to be that great, but they're they're connected. One goes with the other. The HBK Triple H, they well, walk together. They're John's- both going to be on the main roster – 2024 January. So we might as well talk about NXT while we're here. Jesus so, Christ. <laughs> um, <laughs> they got mad, man. <laughs> oh, you moving to Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> we they, got something for you. <laughs> we have a loaded, loaded show next week. Um, I'm probably going to forget something, but John Cena is going to be in Carmelo Hayes' uh, corner. Paul Heyman says that he's going to be there. Uh, Cody Rhodes is going to be there with a special announcement, and we have Asuka versus Roxanne Perez. Uh, what are you looking? At? Is there something I'm forgetting? It is a stack show. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm I'm just sitting there like I'm I'm thinking to myself that the breakout tournament we got. The, you said Oscar. Um, yeah, that's that's the Carmelo Hayes Braun Breaker match is should be is probably going to be the main event, and that's what everything's going to be probably centered around. But they definitely loaded up. Their you know weekly show on Tuesday just for the simple fact that AEW is gonna move to Tuesday because of uh, I'm assuming baseball. Um, yes, because of baseball. I'm, I can't think of like any real big matches, but the two that we talked about are the two that I'm sure they're gonna focus on: Oscar and uh, Roxanne, and obviously Braun versus uh, Mello. Which. I'm sure they're going to pull out all kinds of crazy shit. Cody's going to be there, too. So, I mean, yeah, they're not fucking around. They're, What's Cody's big announcement? It's it's You know it's going to be some kind of, like, trivial. Um, I bet he's moving to SmackDown. There, there has been no Jey Uso compensation, so I'm trying to think, yeah, fast lane would have just happened. If you want, that would at least if Jay and Cody lose, lose th- that would at least justify the fact yeah. that he's on NXT to say he's moving from. You can have him on Raw, hype it up for Tuesday. Yeah, NXT. Tuesday he makes the announcement the that he's going to SmackDown. He's on SmackDown on that Friday, and then Cain Velasquez comes out and attacks him. <laughs> Dirty <laughs> bastard! <laughs> Is that motherfucker in jail, man, or what? Yeah, he's in jail. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> that bad. Boy attacking nobody. Um, Vince really had an eye for talent. Him and the honky tonk man. Hey, I like the honky tonk man. Okay, that was good classic hero Bro. shit. Everybody liked the honky tonk man. Uh, so the other Your thing. Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to think of anything else that happened that's noteworthy on NXT before we talk about the main roster. Um, 
Valkyria won the triple threat. She's next in line for Becky. We talked about that. Um, Kalani Jordan won the opening round for breakout tournament. Yeah, I think we've. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's get to that three count. So the three count will just go uh, WWE main roster. Um, SmackDown, I didn't watch. And I'd like to be honest with you, the listener. I want to be completely upfront. Did not watch SmackDown. And then I was out of town for a wedding. And then the pay-per-view started. <laughs> and it's just been nonstop ever since. That's a lot of wrestling to watch. Jason, don't look at me like that. Um <laughs> <laughs> But the big story coming out of SmackDown was Ellie Knight comes out and saves John Cena. So we're going to have Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa versus John Cena and L.A. Knight at Fastlane this week. Uh, yeah. Jason, what do you have to say about this? Are we getting an L.A. Knight Roman Reigns match sometime soon? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think these are the, the baby steps to get there. Um, I don't know if... Saudi, I, I think Saudi show is coming up. If I'm not mistaken, that's a, a possibility. Um, Survivor Series is a possibility. Um, I like Zach's idea of the Rumble best. I think it ought to. That's a while my, away. It's not that far. Okay, it's dude. Our birthdays will be here before you know it. Okay. Survivor Series feels about right. Rumble is probably the drop dead date for a LA Knight Roman Reigns match, but it's going to happen. And I think Knight and John Cena winning this tag match is a catalyst to get there. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm afraid that if they push LA Knight to the moon and then he loses to Roman Reigns, that you really lose all steam. Um, so I think the him fighting Roman Reigns step too far, but it looks like the machinations are already in order. Um, anything else happened on SmackDown? Um, Oscar, oh, I'm sorry, Charlotte beat Bailey, but Bailey then turns this into a triple threat match for next week. Oscar, EO, and Charlotte are going to have a match next week for the title. Outside of that, uh, Pretty Deadly with another goddamn funny vignette. Um, Ray beats Santos Escobar uh, to retain the U.S. title. Then the Street Profits come out and destroy all of the LWO. So it looks like Lashley and the Profits are now back on track. Um, Austin Theory beats Cameron Grimes. Uh, shit. Yeah, that's uh, Jimmy Uso destroys Carl Anderson. At least Carl Anderson had the decency to show up and earn his paycheck last Friday night. <laughs> Motherfucker, I'm ne I'll never forgive him for the never hoping way title. Never, never. Outside of that, yeah, uh, I'm just shot. Look, I got you know me, okay. I hold a grudge. I hold a suitcase, a grudge like a suitcase. I, I'm sorry, sorry, not sorry. I'm just, I can't do it. Um, do you but, ever, do you ever see it's like my grandfather? Hey man, look, <laughs> that motherfucker held the never open way title hostage. Okay, his, With, wa his wallet ain't got no money in it, but it's full <laughs> as fuck. 1969, son of a bitch. <laughs> Get that ass. <laughs> I was saying, you ain't going no place. Uh, we didn't go that far. We just finished up SmackDown. Go, you can talk about Raw now. Okay, I did watch Raw. It starts off with the brawl. Uh, Nia Jax comes out. Um, she is oh, well, she's brawling. Totally forgot with, about this. She's brawling with Shayna Baszler, and then Rhea Ripley comes out too. He, like just the baby face run in. Like she runs in like a total baby face. Gets tons of cheers. Uh, Raquel Rodriguez. Comes out. I would not have heard had her come out after Rhea Ripley. It's just it's like a fart in the wind, man. But um, so Rhea Ripley, they clear house. I guess she's getting Nia Jax, Nia Jax next. Rhea Ripley stays out and calls out the Judgment Day. This is uh this was good television. I was like, okay, yeah, what she, like this makes sense. Like she clears out a brawl. That's that's a good way. That's an entertaining beginning to a TV show. Uh, she calls out Dom and Priest. Just got to use Nia Jax some way. <laughs> no shit. They're like, 
uh, at one point, Michael Cole was like, everybody that Nia Jax is hurt, has hurt, is coming out. And I was like, boy, we're going to be here for a long time. <laughs> I'm like, they flying Charlotte and shit. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> Nobody told me that shit. <laughs> Damn. This, uh, this rock going to be pretty good. She was outside in a taxi. <laughs> right. Pull it up. <laughs> I'm proud of my beard. It's, just say, it's like that uh, it, it, that seated airplane where there's shit, you know, the old white lady is losing their damn mind. And like, you know, everybody's like, you know, shake out of it, shake out of it. And then the, you see the line is just long, getting longer and longer with guys with bats and you know some guys got the gun it, that'd be like Nia Jackson shit you know <laughs> and well, Michael Cole saying some shit like that motherfuckers dude, got a the line fun, the funniest part would be seeing John Moxley in that line <laughs> <laughs> no shit right <laughs> that's really funny uh, she comes out she stays out there we get to a judgment day Jay and Cody that's how we're getting to the the pay per view. We ha- we have some predictions coming up. Actually, God, I almost forgot shit. about those. So I'm gonna skip around a little bit. Uh, the Champa Gunther match was or the Chomp yeah the Champa Gunther match that ended it uh, was a great match between Gunther and Champa, as good as you would expect it to be. Imperium starts beating down Champa, and then we get the return of Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano comes out to save Champa. Looks like we're getting a DIY reunion. Jason, where you at on this? It took you long enough. God damn. What the fuck? I mean, Johnny Gargano probably is sitting on the bench like, what? Huh? You called me in? Shit. Let me get these splinters out my ass. Um, <laughs> To me, it was a long time overdue. The physical match itself just reminded to me why I love Champa so much in NXT. And it, he could hopefully make a suitable... IC champion if, or U.S. champion if that's what Triple H wants to do. Obviously, the return of DIY makes me a little giddy in the tummy for tag team wrestling. Another reason why, if you wanted to split up the titles, DIY can easily hold one set while another team holds another set, but another story for another time. Um, The match was really good. The return of Johnny Gargano even though upon Monday that quarterback I should have seen it coming I did not see it coming so that was a nice little surprise and uh, it was a nice cherry on top of the main event yeah I'm afraid that they waited so long that a lot of the audience doesn't remember that they were ever together or either doesn't know it because the uh it didn't get the pop in the crowd the way it got the pop from me which is like oh fuck yeah hell yeah let's go let's give these let's put these guys in a title situation um but the mat the match was really cool uh and i guess the only other thing i want to talk about is the very slow burn for mcintyre turning heel what you think about this what did he say at the end of the match? Uh, I guess because i guess because i said i'm sorry so i'm now everything is forgiven he slams down the mic that's that was the whole crux of Drew McIntyre, and you know, as a guy that, like I said, I could hold a grudge like a motherfucker. I kind of understand what Drew's talking about. I mean, damn, you know, these jokers cost me the title, and it's not going to be just that easy for me to forgive and forget. I totally see Drew McIntyre's side. I love the slow burn. It, Miz feels like he's the emperor, you know what I'm saying? Opening the door to the dark side. It's like, yeah, you know, you're not more, you're not any more different than I am. You know, we're just alike. Miz is a great catalyst in this whole thing, just pulling the strings in the background. Nobody's thinking he's doing it, but he's back there doing some shit. So, yeah, I like this slow burn for Drew McIntyre. If Seth Mac or Seth Rollins retains, Drew McIntyre would be a perfect Royal Rumble opponent for Drew or for uh, Seth Rollins. Uh, uh, in the immortal words of Jason Cornelius Bell, make it make sense. <laughs> uh, this heel turn by Drew McIntyre makes sense. That's what his character should be doing. It's like when I saw Train Spotting 2. And nobody saw it. I went and saw it at the theater. And I it's forgot like, there was a second. And it's like, man, this is exactly what these characters would be like 20 years later. It's like it, every single character made so much sense. And that's what I feel about McIntyre. He should be pissed off. What the fuck, man? 
Everybody else has forgotten, not him. How come the only thing that can make you a heel in wrestling is just fucking, uh, like, remembering, like, three weeks ago? <laughs> it's like, no, it wasn't that long ago, man. Uh, but, yeah, I'm totally down with it. So that's How was this this year? It was probably this summer. That was weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, it was, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for our three again. We've got some predictions coming later. One. Whenever what what was uh, their show in uh, Cardiff? Oh, that was last summer. That was over a year ago. Was it over a year? Clash at the Castle. Yeah, that, that was last year. Yeah, yeah, that was that was like the first season of Wrexham. That was uh, <laughs> that was the that was last summer. That was summer twenty twenty two. I'm pretty sure. Um. Anyway, so uh, let's talk about dynamite. Let's. In particular, let's talk about the end of Dynamite. Edge comes out. <laughs> this is where I am. So, all right. So, let, we got to talk about this. <laughs> we we got to talk about this. Uh, this was pure babyface Edge, and I have to say that this is my least favorite version of Edge. I understand. I, I was excited to watch it, and then I watched it, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's just fucking edge he's like too wholesome and he just takes everything in and it really bothers me you know what bothers me even more about this is because christian came out and christian was fucking money in this and edge when christian finally got out there edge was good too he was good playing off of christian when he was just out there riffing it was like okay dude that's enough he was just naming wrestlers he named like 30 fucking wrestlers it's like you're not gonna be able to wrestle them all dude um but Shit, watch him. <laughs> Edge is out there. He Christian comes out there. He makes this plea to him. He's like, don't beat up Sting. He was our hero when we were a kid. He hugs him. Christian hugs him back. Christian takes the microphone while he's hugging him and says, go fuck yourself. And they beep it out. And I was like, what? <laughs> this is so funny to me. Fuck. So I loved all of this. Take the fine, Tony. Take I, the fine. I got I to say, I hated the last shot where Christian's like, this is what you'll have to deal with. And it's him standing next to a fucking guy like dressed like a dinosaur and a literal child, an 18-year-old. So Edge comes back and you're going to end the segment and that's who's supposed to be threatening him? A fucking 18-year-old and a dinosaur? A dinosaur. It looked like fucking, they looked like, it looked like Christian was out there with E.T. and Elliot. <laughs> You ain't shit. It's a dinosaur, though. It's a fucking dinosaur. I don't you know, man. Shit, this dog. Is, it's just That's fucking. Why is horrible. Nick Wayne? Why is Nick Wayne out there? Zach was talking about his dream earlier, and I wanted to say, but I forgot to say it. It's like, why do we have to be a part of that dream? <laughs> Like, he can have his dreams all we want. I don't want to watch somebody's fucking dream just Man, because it's their dream. You can fast forward to shit if you want to, dog. Damn. No, no, but nobody's like, got, but, nobody's but, got but, anime at gunpoint. We, 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 all wake up. Shit. we all wake up. We all wake up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes, we all wake up from the dream, but Nick Wayne standing out there? It's just, I got nothing against Nick Wayne, but how, like, fucking indie and minor league can you fucking look <laughs> When you have the biggest star in the world and the only the, or the biggest signing that you've had in a long time, not the biggest star in the world, yeah, but a huge wrestling, Come on but now. a huge wrestling star, fair, massive wrestling. I mean, this is a bi- this is a it, big, it's a big sign. Deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, and so people are people from WWE WWE fans are gonna who are used to looking at Braun Strowman are gonna turn on AEW. They're gonna watch Adam Copeland's first promo and he's gonna cut a promo. And Christian's gonna come out and it's gonna be real cool and everything. And then Christian's gonna be like, "This is what you got." And let's say you've never watched it before. You're going to be like, what the fuck is this? (laughs) It's a dinosaur. It's not the dinosaur part doesn't bother me as much as the child standing next to him. That's just so weird to me. It's like he's not ready. Like he he can wrestle. That's fine. But why is he getting this? Why is he getting so much fucking TV time? I don't get it. It's not that compelling to me. The the best thing about it is Christian talking about how how hot his mom is. That's kind of the reason that they, I was that the the turn had well part of the reason um, I was my mouth was my mouth dropped open it was just I was like what the fuck they got Nick Wayne standing out there after that 
segment. What are they doing? <laughs> I couldn't stand it. It's I can't get over it. it, it, it what, what am I doing with my free time? <laughs> Obviously, you have the layers of insulation. Let's consider Christian Cage as Tony Soprano, if you will. So you're gonna have to, what? you know, you're gonna have to go through certain hoops to get to Tony Soprano. Hoop number one, obviously, no. going to be Nick Cage. If Christian is Tony Soprano, then Nick Wayne is Vito Jr. Okay. The kid that shits in the shower <laughs> and puts on mascara. <laughs> okay. After his dad dies. Hey, man, I mean, you know, everybody's got a role in this fucking movie. I, 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 get the, I get the optics are bad. I mean, for anyone that's looking for the first time, and even as a wrestling fan, the the suspension of disbelief is going to be hard to buy in when you have Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus standing behind Christian Cage. I get it. It's it's not the best look, but if you watch the show regularly, it all kind of makes some sense in a weird Christian Cage sort of way. He's now, you know, seduced. Nick Wayne over to the dark side, even though he's talking about his mom in, in ways that, you know, guys shouldn't be able to talk about other people's moms and not get their head kicked in. Uh, Luchasaurus blindly following Christian Cage, even though he lost the TNT title to him. So, I mean, there is something to it, but you only get it if you watch regularly. If you watch for this first no. time, it, this is, it's like I said, it's bad what, luck. What they should do going forward is have Nick Wayne ride Luchasaurus down to the ring. Yeah, like He-Man. That would be fucking hilarious. Jesus just Christ. Have Put him, a saddle just, on him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jungle, oh. Bo- Jungle Boy somewhere kicking something in the back. I should have did that. Nah, yeah, I know. Nick Wayne, he's getting jacket. market corrected. Um, <laughs> do it. Just do it. So, hilarious. So, <laughs> he, so, I put the other night when I was watching this match, I put on Friends of BFR on Facebook, uh, Man, Christian has gotten over an angle with a guy dressed like a dinosaur, a literal child, and something else. And I was like, what a king. I was like, king shit, you know, talking about it. And that's really how I felt in that moment. And then Edge came out, and it was cool and everything. And then Wednesday night happened, and I looked at Christian, and I was like, oh, man, he's in an angle with a dinosaur and a literal child. And now, like... Sunday night, it looked so cool before Edge came out. And then after Edge came out and started messing with him, it's like, wait a minute. This is not this is not top of the card stuff. It's not going to be top of the card stuff. This it's is, pretty close to it. If it, if you're in a if you're in a program with Edge, you may not be fighting for the belt, but that's the top of the card. And as long as MJF ain't around, then yeah, it's top of the card. I can go with that. That's fine. MJF is too busy playing uh, tiddlywinks and putting his thumb up Adam Cole's ass and in co- and all this comedy shit. Finally, well, let's okay, yeah, let's pivot. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say, I, I think we need we to do yeah, yeah, pivot. We can pivot. Pivot to <laughs> pivot. <laughs> we can pivot to uh, MJF and Jay White or MJF has a segment with the Bang Bang Gang. Jay White attacks him from behind. Jay White pisses him off enough to where he challenges MJF to a match. MJF accepts. So we actually this is actually a really long time between now and that match. Is that match at full gear? That's a month and a half away. It's been a while since <laughs> since AEW has had a month and a half without a big. Take event. a minute, shit. Let let this shit breathe. Man. It really has been a while though. I mean, damn, they did two back-to-back. They just did this one. I mean, fuck. That, that, don't get me wrong. Three really good cards of wrestling. But let, let's let's let some shit breathe for a little bit. Let's, you know, invest in, you know, MJF versus Jay White. Let's give it the proper build that I think it deserves. Uh, I mean, Collision's got FTR versus Ricky Starks and Big Bill. I think that's going to be a fun match. I don't know. It's just they never stop. There's so much fucking wrestling, man. Like, I started to feel a little burnt out this week. I got to admit, we've been going pretty hard for a while now. (laughs) I thought I was going to take the week off. 
Oh, man, it's just so much fucking wrestling. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I'm exhausted. We're getting Jay White versus Zach. I haven't even, even watched it all. <laughs> it's exhausting. Uh, MJF versus Jay White. Uh, is there any chance Jay White wins this? I said it on Twitter when I watched it this this afternoon. This feels like the first time since MJF has won it where the title feels like it's legitimately in jeopardy. And I'm not saying this as a Jay White mark. I just feel oh, that Jay- it was legitimately in jeopardy versus Adam Cole, baby. No, it wasn't. Oh, yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. All right. Okay. It Maybe for you, but for me, I never thought. And I'm not saying it's to be contrarian. I never thought that MJF was going to lose the title. I always thought that it was the swerve was the question mark in that whole thing. Who was swerving who? Um, that said, Jay White's there for a reason. I'm not saying that he's he needs to be AEW champion right now, but at some point I think he will be. So, yeah, um, for me personally – this is the first time that I'm looking at this match where if Jay White wins, it it would not surprise me. I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't be shocked. It would be something. It would be someone that legitimately in my head of heads, he could beat MJF and it, it wouldn't miss a beat. Jay White at the top is is still money. Not maybe as, as popular as MJF is right now, but at the top of the card, Jay White will be just as good. I do not think that the rest of the viewing audience feels the way that I feel, which is exactly how you feel, which is that Jay White is a completely legitimate heavyweight champion. Uh, He can carry a belt. He can wrestle the matches. His character is on point. Uh, He's he's the total package. Uh, Not a lot of people. I don't think a lot of people feel that way. Certainly, if you never watched, if you ever watched him in New Japan. You probably have no idea uh, what we're talking about, but and there lies the problem. Because well, Tony, I shouldn't say the problem, but well, Tony has yet to present him like as big of a deal as he probably is, and you can't. I mean, just that's like, why I think we're having this. It feels like we gap. made. It feels like we made a big jump in the last couple of weeks from where Jay White was to where Jay White is. No, I think in it, AEW. I think it was. Honestly, and this is the CM Punk effect. Sorry, that I, I know we ain't supposed to talk about him, but just belabor me for thirty what seconds. What up, turd? Um, <laughs> God damn, I love that. If Punk was going to be the quote unquote real world champion, he was still going to be on collision. Jay White was on collision, so obviously we we're going to we were having title matches for this title. That's where if you wanted to have Jay White be a champion, you can do that shit. I wouldn't have been a huge fan of that. To me, it had been the interim, you know, women's title that they passed around for a little bit until they retired that. But now that it's gone, you're kind of being forced into putting Jay White into the main event scene with MJF. Jay White's undefeated. He's won these little small matches here and there. Getting to this point, now we're just here. I don't have a problem with it. No, I don't. I certainly don't have a problem with it. I think it fucking rules. Um, just, uh, I guess I didn't expect it. Maybe I should have. Um, and then, uh, so I guess the other, the other only other big news is that Powerhouse Hobbs seems to have joined the Callis family. So he comes out uh, after a match with Jericho and Omega versus Kyle Fletcher and Takeshita. Powerhouse Hobbs uh, enters the picture and uh, beats the shit out of Jarek, or beat, really beats the shit out of Omega. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are you at on this, Jason? I like it. I would be lying if I said otherwise. Powerhouse Hobbs is will be the muscle of the Don Callis family. So you got a nice little eclectic collection of wrestlers. Sammy Guevara, the high flyer, Takeshita as the figurehead, and now... What's the most stars you think Kenny Omega could get out of Powerhouse Hobbs in a match? Four and a half. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I would love to watch a Powerhouse Hobbs-Kenny Omega match. I hope we do get a singles match between oh, the two. I think two. we do. Yeah, uh, it's not... Miro, necess- we want to give Miro Powerhouse Hobbs a second to kind of breathe a little bit Miro's a and deep. then come back to that at a later point. Miro's another guy that Edge keeps mentioning. Yeah, he did He did uh, call that man's name out. I'm like, boy, you better just calm down, man. Put your toe in this water. <laughs> settle down, Beavis. Settle down. 
Uh, and Wardlow comes back cold as shit. Uh, what what do you think about this? What do you think about the crowd's reaction? It started off hot, I guess. For I shouldn't say hot. It was the genuine, you know, pop that you would expect because he had been gone so long. But I mean, ultimately, he didn't do anything that we hadn't seen before. It was still the basic, you know, and and I get it. I mean, that he did what he was supposed to do. But I don't know. I just. What I don't know what TK is going to do at this point. I mean, it just really feels like that ship has sailed, and trying to recreate that magic again is going to be real, real difficult. You're going to have to come up with, I, if it's, I don't know if even Christian could drop the title to Wardlow and get Wardlow hot again. Uh, well, Maybe MJF. Counter, Maybe, counterpoint. Go Counter, ahead. Counterpoint. Wardlow's dad is dead. It would be good comedy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know what TJ TK is going to do here. I just, it, nothing at Wardlow is d- is done right now. And granted, it's just one match. I'm sure he, he'll do the same thing to some. Poor unsuspecting soul next week. Maybe MJF versus Wardlow, where Wardlow is the heel. Maybe that's a, a way you can go, but it, it's not too many places. Ooh, to go. I like that. Didn't even think about that. It's the uh, MJF. It, let's try this again. Wardlow's best success is with MJF. Always said that oh, with it's a, not the, even close. A I heel mean. MJF. I always I said the end game was going to be a babyface Wardlow taking the title from him. MJF got him over. Correct. Now, if you want to try to get him hot again, you could. If you wanted to play it, then sorry, I'm going to take the pencil for thirty seconds. You could have MJF beat Jay White and then post match have Wardlow attack. MJF and then set that match up for the first of the year. I love it. Oh my god. That's the, that's the only way I can even see give Christian this, is good but man damn. Point. I just don't see Christian be able to get Wardlow hot again. Putting a good cross from MJF, people would want to watch to see that match. What do you think about Phoenix versus Nick Jackson? Um obviously I was upset with this last week because Brian Cage was the guy or cardio either or I would have been more accepted of because if once again it felt like Ray Phoenix's title would have been in jeopardy but this was a dope ass match it was just a fucking spot fest and it was a good ass spot fest for if this is really Nick Jackson's fourth singles match I find that very hard to believe by the way then he is an amazing singles wrestler I will you can't his fourth singles match ever though if I heard it correctly that's what I thought Excalibur said. I might have heard this incorrectly, and that's why I'm just kind of like, I'm I watching mean, this. I'm like, there is no way that this is I his mean, fourth singles it, match yeah, all but, time. But singles match versus tag team match, it's, it's, it's a different style, but it's the same language. I mean, it's not like doing two completely different things. You're still, you're still fake fighting. I, I agree you're still fake fighting, but for me... And like you said, it's a spot fest. It wasn't like they... Fucking, you know, told the Iliad and the Odyssey while they were in there. Not, not by no means. It was not Danielson, uh, ZSJ by no stretch. Okay, just for me, like I said, I just find it very hard to believe that that was his fourth match singles. And if that's the case, it kind of really just rubbed a little salt in that wound that maybe Brian Cage should have got this spot. Maybe what was cardio good got this spot, but quickly I got away from that because the match just was that entertaining. Yeah, real fun, and they're still going with the fucking Adam Cole comedy angle, and they've just shifted it into Roderick Strong's camp. <sighs> I just got to say, like, I don't know. I just saw this. I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, we're, we're still doing this. It's like. Say it, nigga, damn. <laughs> just not, not really why I'm watching wrestling for, like, it's, like, funny for wrestling, which really isn't funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, um, MJF Cole greater than Cole 
Roddy Strong slash Kingdom. Um, don't get me wrong. It's it was funny, just not as funny as the Adam Cole MJF segments. Um, it's not as funny as they think it is for sure. The funny part to me is obviously having Adam Cole moving all the furniture with the banged up foot. That to me is funny. From there, yeah, it's not like Yano. From there, fuck Yano. By the way, I say I'm not going to let that slide. Not like actually funny, like a Yano match. Look, I'm not. I'm not saying that it's it fucking <laughs> hilarious. I'm not saying it is on that level. I'm just saying it. It. It just provokes a little irony. That's all. Sure. Okay. okay. All right. Let's yeah. go that route. All right. Uh, yeah. So that is going to do it for some odds and ends. Banned from ringside. All right. So we have some predictions for WWE Fastlane, which is this weekend. I mean, I told you I was fucking burnt out on this shit, and now there's another fucking paper. Fuck. God damn, man. I got to start skipping some stuff. That's all I'm saying. I got to start skipping. Like, I, I didn't watch Collision or SmackDown this week because I was out of town. Uh, I'll tell you what. Hey, Miss AJ, too much. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It felt good. Look at you. Look at you, man. Felt good. Skip hey, man, that look, wrestling look, content. Look, look, put that rubber hose around your arm. Smack that vein. Get it right nice no, and ready. No, Come it on. felt good Come to on. miss we, we, No, nah, we're going to put that drug right back in that arm, baby boy. Don't you worry about it. It's just it, This might smart a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Too much wrestling. You be all right. Excuse me. So, we have WWE <laughs> Fastlane this weekend. And there's only five matches advertised right now on the Wikipedia page. You might... Maybe after we do these, you might... Um, I would assume something on SmackDown should happen. Yeah, they'll add something. I don't know what it is, though. But, uh, so let's start off. We have LWO, which is Santos Escobar, Rey Mysterio Jr., and either Walking Wild or the other one. Oh, shit. Uh, versus... Raul Mendoza was his name beforehand. I can't remember what it is now. Versus Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. And if Bobby Lashley doesn't get from the Street Profits what he wants, he's done with them. That's basically the stipulation on this match. Who do you have? I'm taking the heels here. Um, I've always kind of said that I'm not a huge fan of Lashley and the Profits coming out and high-fiving fans and still dancing on the way down to the ring. I'm at the point now where this needs to be a full-blown heel turn. I think this is a step on the way to do so. If you want to take the title off of Ray, have Lashley do that in the interim while Rome is the champ. You could do that, too. Another way to do that. So, yeah, it's too many reasons for the heels not to win. So, yeah, I'm taking the heels. I, too, am taking Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. I think that they are going to destroy them. I think that this team needs a name. They they need a. I know it's. I know the hurt business is you know already taken care of. Bobby and the Prophets, Psh, done. That sounds like a. That sounds like a Motown group. Nigga, you stole my words. I was getting ready to say that's like some uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips type shit. Yeah, I like that. I'm taking Bobby and the Prophets. <laughs> that, that's gonna be a BFR thing. I can see that catching on for a couple yeah, weeks. That's good. Uh, so. Uh, we have a triple threat match for the women's heavyweight SmackDown championship between champion EO Sky and challengers Asuka and Charlotte Flair. I'll go first here. I'm going to go least to most, and I have to say that I have not thought about this. Um, but I always say when Charlotte's there, bet on Charlotte. So I'm taking Asuka third, I'm taking EO second, and I'm taking Charlotte Flair as the most likely. Jason, who you got? Mm. I agree with Asuka as least likely to win uh, how quickly she's going to go back to the back seat. Um, like I said, the probably the most underrated Grand Slam champion of all time when it comes to women, but another story for another time. I'm going to take Charlotte Flair in the two spot. Um I know that I just said you got to bet on Charlotte all the time when she wrestles, but there's been times where I bet against Charlotte and it's worked in my favor, and there's been times I've been burnt, so I'm going to roll the dice here, take Charlotte in the second spot, 
And obviously, number one, I'm going to take EO Sky to retain. Just don't feel like it's her time to cough it up just yet. Damn show don't feel like it's her time to cough it up to Charlotte. 16 going to be there whenever she wants to get to it. So ultimately, she'll break Rick's record, but I don't think she should win here. And I think ultimately, EO Sky retains. Uh, yeah, I'm just taking Charlotte just for pure odds. Just when Charlotte's in it. But would this be the record-breaking title run? This well, wouldn't be 17, would it? If they give Charlotte the NXT title run that subsequently they took away from her, I believe it would be now at 15. I think they keep saying that she's a 14-time champ. You give her the NXT title back, that's 15. So... If my number is correct, if she wins, it would tie Rick's record. Betting on Charlotte. Uh, Zach didn't get his picks in, so he gets zero points this week, which is good because right now he is at 84, you're at 81, and I'm at 77. So I'm a full seven back from Zach. Mm. Uh, You and I got 13 this week, and he got 15. He had a good weekend. Eat my Um, ass. I know. Um, So... Uh, let, let's go with the Judgment Day versus Cody Rhodes and Jay Uso. Who for the tag belts? Judgment Day is the champion. Who do you got? I'm gonna stick with Judgment Day. Um, as crazy as it may seem that Cody and Jay could win the titles, I'm not going to totally dismiss it. It would be a, a bit of a swerve, but ultimately Judgment Day will have to go there. Well, I wouldn't say that. I, I should say um, Damian Priest would have to go his separate. I think ultimately Je- Judgment Day stays together once the Priest leaves. But right now I'm going to still roll the dice. Judgment Day is hot again. I'm going to take Judgment Day to retain. This is Finn and Priest mm-hmm. versus Cody and Uso. You know, I've been going back and forth on this one. I could really I see I could totally it. see them taking the titles off. It, 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 if it's they do such it. such a fucking Vince thing to do. Yes. If they do it, I'll, I'll wait until you pick, and then I'll say what I was going to say. Go ahead. It's like the ultimate Vince thing. I just don't think that it just doesn't seem like Hunter style. I got to go with Judgment Day. If they do take the titles off of Judgment Day, you could then go with the pre-story, single storyline if you want to. But more importantly, it gives Cody more things to do on the way to WrestleMania. If WrestleMania is still going to be Cody and Roman, that that's time in between. That's still in April, okay? That's time that we still need to burn. Cody being a tag team champion, it's time to burn. So, but you're picking I'm judge- still taking Judgment Day. Okay, all right. Uh, Cena and LA Knight versus Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso. I'll go first here. Don't go led by block of the week. <laughs> Cena and LA Knight. Uh, who do you got, Jason? Yeah, that's going to say I, I can't sit up here and say that LA Knight and Rome is going to happen if LA Knight and John Cena lose this match. I agree with you. This is the Stone Cold, Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock of the Week. Actually, I'm going to let us both change this because I know once I say this, you're going to say, yeah, that's the Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock of the Week. Okay. Bobby and the Prophets? That's going to be my Stone Cold Left by Block of the Week. I'm going to still, I'm gonna still keep, keep this as my Stone Cold Left by Block of the Week. Oh, That's I fine. love it. I love the gambling. Okay. And, uh, yeah, there's no way that Cena and LA Knight lose here. No, it's Jimmy Uso. It, Jimmy Uso's going to eat the t- pin. Yeah, they could easily eat the pin. That would piss Roman off. It's it, it kind of writes itself. Uh, and then finally for the Raw or the World Heavyweight Championship, we have John. Or I'm sorry, uh, Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. JCB, I'm gonna let you go first. Of course you are. Um, I love the build. I love this. I already wrote mine down. Okay. Um, I love the build. I love this uh, heel Nakamura. I said it on Twitter. Uh, this is a reason why I wish Vince would have gave up control a while ago. This is the heel Nakamura that I've been waiting to see for uh, quite some time. Way more intriguing than this uh, Vince heel Nakamura run that you had um, 
Last Man Standing, it's it's an interesting little step because obviously you have Seth Rollins back in play. He's going to break his back. Uh, he's going to do everything to that back and then some. That's that's what I want to see. That's, that's the Shinsuke that I expect to see on uh, Saturday night. All that said, I'm going to be a punk. I, did, I can't see them going away from Seth Rollins yet. If I'm going to take Seth Rollins, that's my pick. If Seth wins, you could easily see Damian Priest come out and at least tease the cash in, if not cashing in. Because th- this is a step where the champion is busted up in peril and has now won. Very, very vulture-like, if you will. You have the carcass down and not barely able to move. Now it's time to attack. I'm taking Seth Rollins just for the caveat because Damian Priest holds money in the bank. Uh, I'm taking Nakamura. This is the time. It's time to pull the trigger. They've made him a very credible threat. I love me some Nakamura. This heel iteration. I'm with Jason on it. Uh, has been fantastic. Just really, really great. I think it would be very cool for him to win it. I also know that they just signed a TV deal for Japan. And so maybe they just put a little shine on Nakamura there for a little while uh, while they roll out their weekly television in Japan. So um, I'm taking Nakamura, although your priest argument almost sold me. I mean, mean, you could have the situation where Finn and Finn and Priest are tag team belts, have the tag team championship, and Priest has the heavyweight championship. That would be a lot. That, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it, it's it's implausible, but... It's in play. It's in play, for sure. Uh, but I'm going to stick with my guns, and I'm going to go with Nakamura. That's what's up. This is banned from ringside. Okay, we got some birthdays. The aforementioned Joaquin Wild uh, used to be known as Zima Eon. He is 37. Bruno, well played. Bruno San Martino, used, uh, RIP, would be 88. Rhino is only 48. That's it? That can't be right, right? That seems unbelievable. I think I remember me saying I was older than Rhino last year. That just that bothers me. So that I feel like that's right. That's, it, that's fucking crazy. Aiden English... Uh, so this week, Aiden English is going to celebrate his Rusev Day. <laughs> Very sick. He's doing some shit over at Impact, man. Another reason to watch if you don't watch. Uh, the Miz is 43. Eddie Guerrero would have been 56. R.I.P. Stevie Richards still kicking at 52. Dusty Rhodes, R.I.P. 78. Mm-hmm. Rikishi, 57. Taz is 56. Ricochet is 35. Rhea Ripley is 27, and Riddick Moss out there interviewing. He is 34. <laughs> hey, everybody. We know there's tons of podcasts to listen to, so we appreciate you guys listening to our podcast for Vice, check. for my dogs, for check. my cats, check. for my families, Double check. for Tinder Mahal, for Lucha Chris, for Murray check. the Murray Man Murray, check. for Patreon Pat. Check. For Three Beards, Zach Coleman. Check. For Jason Cornelius Bell. Can meet you while bitches. Uh, Black Lives Matter. Support check. your local restaurants. Check. Support your local weed dealers. Triple check, dog. Uh, you know, call your parents. Say hello. Check. And never ever forget <coughs> to boo the heels. Boo! Bitch. <laughs>